Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and I am doing the last AP Calculus 2017 free response question, and this is number six. Okay, so let f be the function defined by f of x equals cosine 2x plus e to the sine x. Oh, that's a nasty one. And let g be a differentiable function. The table above gives the values of g and the derivative g for selected values of x. Okay, so they've given me a function. They've given me g and g prime. Let h be a function whose graph consisting of five line segments is shown in the figure above. Okay, so, okay, that's h. Find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals pi. Okay, slope of the tangent line, y minus y naught equals m x minus x naught. For a tangent line, I need two things. I need to know the slope of the line, and I need to know the point that the line uh, is going through. So at x equals pi, f equals cosine of 2 pi plus e to the sine pi. You got to really know your unit circle. No calculator on this. Cosine 2 pi is 1. Sine of pi is 0. e to the 0 is 1, so that's 2. So that means the point goes through pi 2. Okay, that's my point. Now the slope is given by the derivative f prime, derivative of this would be uh, negative sine 2x times 2 by chain rule plus e to the sine x because e to the anything is the derivative is e to that same anything time but since this is an x up here I'm gonna multiply by the derivative there okay so I need to plug in at my point pi what the slope is because this is the general derivative for all values of x but I'm only interested in um, at pi because that's the where the slope I'm interested in negative sine of 2 pi times 2 plus e to the sine pi times cosine of pi sine of 2 pi is 0 so this whole thing is 0 e to the sine pi sine pi is also 0 so e to the 0 is 1 cosine of pi is 1 so this is equal to 1 so the slope is 1 and my point is this so my answer for a is y minus 2 equals uh, 1 times x minus pi or y equals x minus pi plus 2 okay b let k be the function defined by h of f of x find k prime of x okay so k of x equals h of f of x k prime of x would be h prime of f of x times f prime of x. This is like chain rule. It's like I take the derivative and still at that f of x and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside because the inside's not x. Okay, so h prime, first I gotta do f of x, so and it's at pi. So k prime of pi is h prime of f of pi times f prime at pi. Well, we already computed some of these. f of pi is um, 2. So this is equal to h prime of 2. And the derivative at pi was 1. So it's just h prime of 2. h prime of 2. Well, this is h. I go to 2. And h prime would be the slope here. The slope here is I go down 1 and over 3. So it would be negative 1 third. Okay, C, let m be the function defined by m of x equals g of negative 2x times h of x. Find m prime of 2. Okay, so now it's just even more complicated. So here they're really testing whether or not you understand all the rules of differentiation. Okay, I'm multiplying two functions, so I definitely do product rule. So I'm going to do first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Let me just clear a little space here when I run over. The derivative of the first is g prime of negative 2x. But because the inside isn't x, uh, I got to multiply by negative 2. Okay. So m prime of 2 would be g of negative 4 
h prime of 2 plus h of 2 g prime of negative 4 times negative 2. Okay, so let's substitute all of these. What's g of negative 4? g of negative 4 is 5. h prime at 2, we said was negative 1 third. h of 2 is... I guess negative two thirds. If, if, if this is like negative one third, negative two thirds, negative three thirds, right? So that's minus two thirds. G prime of four, of negative four, times negative one, times negative two. So this is negative five thirds. Negative, 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 positive, negative, right? Because I got three negative signs, so I'm ended with negative minus four thirds minus nine-thirds, negative three. Okay, that's C. We'll do D up here. I know I kind of do this nice U shape and not very organized, so I apologize for that. I don't really know how much work any of these problems are gonna be until I actually do them, so I kind of, if you see me checking over here, I'm kind of just checking <laughs> to see like uh, it shows up on the screen, because I know I did a couple videos where I wrote off the screen where you guys couldn't see, so. Is there a number c in the closed interval, negative 5 to 3, such that g prime of c is negative 4? So between here and here, g prime goes from negative 3 to 4. And the slope, this interval, okay. I, you could either do two ways. You could look at intermediate value theorem on g prime of x, right? That would be intermediate value theorem. g prime goes from negative 3 to 4. Okay, so negative 4 is not in that range, so intermediate value theorem wouldn't guarantee it. But uh, mean value theorem, or yeah, mean value theorem would tell me that, well, I know that g of 5 minus g of negative, sorry, negative 3 over negative 3 minus negative 5. Like the slope of this interval is um, g of negative 5, or negative 3 and negative 5 would be um, 2 minus 10 over 2, which is equal to um, two minus, minus 8 minus negative four, okay? By the mean value theorem, um, there exists, because this is like slope of the, this is a secant line slope. Like if I have an interval, I'm saying this, this is what mean value theorem says, is I do a slope over an interval, there's gotta be some other point in here where the, the, the tangent line slope is, or the derivative is, has, is parallel to this. So there exists C, such that um, g prime of c equals negative four it equals this negative four value. So that's 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 what mean value theorem. I think that's all they want you to do. So let's take a look on the scoring guidelines for number six. Um, oh, son of a negative one. Oh, is there two? I missed. Wait, what? Wait, what? That's zero. Oh, cosine of pi is negative one. Oh, son of a uh, Okay. Yeah, I missed that up. I don't know why I thought it was positive one. It's negative one. So that changes all of this. So I, I messed that one up. Cosine of pi is negative one. I was just saying that you need to know your unit circle. And uh, here I am messing that up. So... Oh, and they just, they didn't even want the equation of the tangent line. They just wanted a slope. I didn't even read that correctly. Uh, I got one, but it's really negative one. So I, I, I just didn't do that right. Um, one third for the second one. 
because I said this is one, so my signs are all messed up. <laughs> That's really embarrassing. I got a sign messed up. So I got one here, negative one there down there. Okay, let's see. Negative three on C, good. And then, uh, therefore, my mean value, so it's G is differentiable, implies it's continuous. Um, I did not establish explicitly that it was continuous. It was already told to me that G was differentiable. That automatically means it's continuous. But I didn't explicitly say that, so I don't know if they would have docked me a point for that. So not a great showing on this one, just because I did a computational mistake. But hopefully it clearly outlined like all the steps you're supposed to make, you're supposed to do for this one. And so that wraps up uh, the 2017 AP calculus exam. I think I did pretty well, except for a few minor mistakes, which I really rarely get these perfect. Um, I always make a small mistake, but you know, perfection isn't necessarily what you have to get to um, you know do well on these exams. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe, um, and I will see you uh, in the next calculus uh, free response questions that I do. Probably 2016. I seem to be going backwards. So, all right, I'll see you next time.